Securing retirement incomes is a major challenge facing individuals and societies. Aging populations, global market volatility and rising levels of government debt mean that retirement income systems are under enormous pressure both now and in the future. Our research shows that no retirement system is perfect. Some are delivering better results than others, but overall retirement income systems around the world face common challenges that need to be addressed now. Measuring different retirement income systems is complex, particularly when policies of pension systems are so different. But in the end, retirement is about three common principles. One, adequacy. How much do individuals get? Two, sustainability. Can the current system last? And three, integrity. Can you trust the system? We've benchmarked 16 countries across 40 different indicators and given them a score under these three pillars. Adequacy represents 40% of the total index. Countries that do well in adequacy have an above average public pension to relieve poverty and a good net replacement rate for average income earners. Sustainability makes up 35%. Countries that do well in this part have good pension coverage, usually through some form of compulsion and a high level of funded pension assets. Integrity makes up 25%. Countries that do well in integrity have robust regulation in place governing their system and good communication with participants. So how did each country score? You can see from this table that no country has achieved an A-grade score. In fact, all countries can make significant improvements to achieve what we refer to as the gold standard. The index report can provide valuable lessons and insights into how countries are grappling with the economic and social challenges of an ageing population. And not surprisingly, there are common improvements that need to be made, no matter where you are in the world. Firstly, we're living longer. Governments need to act now and increase the state pension age or the retirement age to reduce the future cost on public finances. Secondly, we need to keep our older citizens employed for longer to increase their retirement benefits and to improve financial security. Thirdly, we need measures to increase private saving both within and beyond the pension systems. Fourthly, we need to recognise that many individuals will not save for the future without an element of compulsion or automatic enrolment. And fifthly, we need good policy to ensure that funds saved are used for retirement income purposes and not accessed before retirement. This will improve the sustainability of the whole system. For more detailed information on how the Melbourne MRSA Global Pension Index was calculated and what each country needs to do to improve their score, I encourage you to read the report which you can access online. As we all face the future, Pension systems are too important to ignore.